Summer is in full swing, which means a whole lot of outdoor entertaining. Today, I'm excited to share with you a foolproof menu for hosting an outdoor dinner party. I absolutely love this menu because it looks really impressive, but it's actually very simple to put together and it features a ton of fresh herbs from my garden. What could be better than that? I'm going to show you an incredibly simple but elegant fig salad with pecans and goat cheese, my rustic roasted chicken with a garlic and herb rice pilaf, some oven kissed asparagus with a homemade lemon butter, and we're going to wrap things up with a strawberry basil crisp. How delicious does that sound? I created this delicious menu for my brand new series on the Design Network, How to Host. So once you're done watching this yummy video, be sure to head over for lots of tips, tricks, and shortcuts for hosting your next dinner party. All right, so let's get started with a simple and elegant fig salad. In a large bowl, I've got some arugula standing by, and to that, I am going to add some figs, some toasted pecans, and I'm going to finish it off with some crumbled goat cheese. Next, I'm going to make my dressing, and it's really as simple as combining some olive oil with some balsamic vinegar and a drizzle of honey. I'm going to whisk all this together and then set it aside because we're not going to dress our salad until just before our dinner party. Next up, I've got my rustic roasted chicken. I love this recipe because it's really simple to put together, but it looks very impressive on a dinner table. In a large baking dish, I'm starting with a few tablespoons of butter. To my butter, I am going to add some shallots and some garlic that I've just peeled and cut in half. I'm also going to be adding some beautiful fresh herbs. So I've got some fresh thyme leaves and some freshly chopped rosemary. A word of caution when you're chopping your rosemary, be sure to be very careful or you could end up being a casualty like I was. So I'm going to sprinkle my fresh herbs into the dish and then put this into the oven at 375 for between three and four minutes or until the butter is melted completely and all of the yummy ingredients start becoming fragrant. For this recipe, I'm using some chicken legs and chicken thighs because I find they're more rustic and flavorful than say boneless, skinless chicken breast. And then very carefully using tongs, you're going to dredge your chicken pieces through the butter so they're well coated on all sides. Next, you are going to season your chicken well with some salt and some pepper. And then we're going to finish this off with just a splash of chicken stock to prevent anything from sticking. Back into the oven this goes at 375 until your chicken is cooked through. When it's done, your house is going to smell amazing. I like to serve this rustic roasted chicken family style and just let everyone help themselves. Next up, we are going to tackle my garlic and herb rice pilaf. This is a really simple recipe with really flavorful results. So in a saucepan on the stove, I'm combining some long grain and wild rice with some chicken broth. You could also do this with vegetable broth if you wanted to. I'm also going to add two cloves of minced garlic to this, and then I'm going to bring it to a boil. Once it's reached a boil, I'm going to turn my heat to low, cover my pot, and let it cook for about 20 minutes. After that, I'm going to turn my heat off and let it sit for another five minutes. Once the rice is completely cooked, I'm going to season it with some fresh lemon juice and some freshly chopped chives, basil, and parsley. We're going to finish it off with some salt and pepper and it is ready to serve. For the final dish in our main course, we are making some oven-kissed asparagus with some homemade lemon butter. Now I call this oven-kissed as opposed to oven-roasted because I just want to cook it until it turns bright green, but it's still crisp to the bite. So I've got my asparagus on a baking sheet and all I'm going to do is drizzle a little olive oil over it and then season it with salt and pepper. Into the oven it goes at 375 for maybe five to 10 minutes. Keep a really good eye on it because all you want to do is see it turn bright green. That means it's ready. In the meantime, I'm just going to whip up a really simple lemon butter. So I've got my butter standing by at room temperature and I'm going to season it with salt and pepper and then add some lemon zest and a splash of lemon juice. I'm going to whip everything together well with a fork and then I'm going to set my butter aside until just before I serve my asparagus. It is such a beautiful accompaniment, your guests are going to love it. We are wrapping things up today with a simple but elegant strawberry basil crisp for dessert. So I'm starting with some sliced strawberries in a large bowl and I'm just going to toss them in a little bit of flour. The flour is going to help create a nice thick sauce for our crisp. 
Next, I'm going to add the juice of a lemon and some sugar. Now you could stop here, but if you really want to take this right over the top, the secret is adding some freshly chopped basil from the garden. We're going to toss this all together well and then transfer the mixture into our mason jars. I'm using mason jars for this recipe because I think they look adorable on the table. You could also do this with ramekins if you prefer. Once you've filled your jars, it's time to switch your focus to your crisp. Now the difference between a crisp and a crumble is all about your oats. So I've got some room temperature butter in a bowl and to that I'm going to add some flour, some brown sugar, and some oats. I'm going to use a fork to mix this all together well and then I'm going to pack this tasty mixture on top of my strawberries. What I love about this dessert is that it can be put together ahead of time and then all you need to do is pop it in the oven at 375 right before you sit down to dinner and 30 minutes later it will be bubbly and ready to eat. Your guests will absolutely adore it. I really hope you enjoyed this foolproof dinner party menu and that you'll give these recipes a try. If you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And don't forget to check out the latest episode of my series, How to Host, on the Design Network. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Domestic Geek because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.